So what restaurants right now carry your salt? We sell to 11 Madison Park, we sell the Nomad, we sell to Gramercy Tavern, we sell to Untitled, we sell to the Dutch. We'll sell probably about 50 pounds a week to restaurants and, and food makers, mm -hmm. and then, um, then the balance of it goes into the retail packaging. We are gonna head out into the water to find out how ocean water gets turned into the finest sea salt that some of the best restaurants and chefs use all over the country. I've been making salt first as a hobby almost for about 30 years now. As a business, we started this in 2010. The first jar of salt we sold was in the summer of 2011. Wow. And I've had it. It's so delicious. Like, I use it to finish things mostly because I just want to taste it. Well, I always liked food. I always liked eating. I always liked eat, eating well. It's, it's, it's important. And living in Manhattan, it's certainly, it's certainly easy to do that. Part of what drew me to making salt was the naturalness of it, the traditional methods. And, um, and we've, we started doing that when we were a lot smaller and we continue to do that in large part because I don't want to despoil what I have. Um, we still get the water bucket by bucket. During the summertime, we're getting about 2,000 uh, gallons of water every week. By hand? Everything by hand. Does it take longer to do it in solar? Oh, yeah. It's, it's long, it's, it's unpredictable. It's, it's, we, think, we think it's certainly the best way to do it. It's also the hardest way. We're going to the ocean. We're gonna to get today about 100 gallons of water in this run. Generally, we make two or three runs a day. 100 gallons. <laughs> We're gonna go so up, up to probably a little bit above our knees. Okay, right where the waves are breaking. Exactly. I take two at a time, I find I'm more balanced. If I can carry two buckets, which I'm thinking my first time in, should I go with the two or try out one? Go with two. I don't wanna leave one out there. No, I don't want you to do that either. Go with two, don't fill them up all the way. Got it. Right, so, so right now, if we go on the back side of this wave, We'll be very gentle. That was good. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We've collected about 100 gallons of seawater. It felt like it. A little more than about 850 pounds worth of seawater. Um, we'll typically do this two or three times a day. We're going to only do it one today. How, thank God. How we, we're a little slower today. <laughs> how much salt, finished salt, would 100 gallons make? We won't get 100% yield. A lot of that's intentional. Right. So this 100 gallons will give us probably about 15 pounds of salt. I'm excited to see the next steps. This one here is for all of the kids. School's out, so you should know what time it is. It's the summertime. The water that we picked up from the ocean, there's sand in it, there's other floating and swimming things in it. We want to get rid of those, so we're going to, so as we get it out, we're going to put it through a filter where it's going to slowly leach into our, um, into these salt turns, and they're both sediment as well as to go through another filtering step. We won't plant new crops from the end of November until the middle of January. It's not cold enough, and it's still damp. Once we get into the middle of January, the humidity goes way, way down, and all of a sudden things evaporate a lot better. Right, so you're not bringing in as much water. Exactly. We'll go and we'll start replenishing our supplies, but instead of going three times a day, we'll go three times a week. How are you with siphoning? We're about to find out. <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> right now we're, we're gonna put this through, this is a 50 micron sieve. Thickness of a fine hair, the diameter wow. of the hair. <laughs> Perfect. I'm siphoning. It's cloudy because here we're having a fair amount of algae and plankton. Right. We're trying not to eliminate all the algae. We're trying to moderate it. That's where a lot of the flavor comes from. 
So your salinity doesn't really change. It's just the minerality, all the impurities. Exactly. That's what's kind of varying. If we were harvesting salt and drying it on a lava flow, it would have a different flavor as well as a different color because of what's because of the the minerals in that lava and that that's that's a lot of yeah. that's a lot of carbon and that's really that's where say Hawaiian black salt originally came from if it was in contact with a lot of iron deposits it would have a red color and that's where Himalayan uh, pink salt This is comes so from. interesting yeah and that flavor of the ocean is obviously the, the 70 some odd salt compounds together with the algae. In the summer, evaporation happens in a few weeks, three weeks. Yeah. And then in the colder months, that slows down to what? To about three months. Three months. So how do you know when it's done? How do you know what, which one of these to pick? By look. By look. From here, I can see, I can see crystals on this one. I can see crystals over here, and if I open this up, we'll see them a lot clearer. And the goal is to just to glide them across. This first batch was planted in March. So this took two months to crystallize to where you can harvest it. Right, after two months in the spring, we got enough crystals to make it worth our while to go kneel down and... Right. So if you could just try to dump it right in the middle there. Oh my gosh. And this is really where it's more art than science. The, f the formula is, I don't know if, it's go if I'm gonna have two weeks of pure sunshine right. or not. But this all ties back into your very by hand natural craft. Exactly. You know? Let's start. Let's, let's, let's start, start with the with classic. This. this is this is good enough to to eat. Um, I'm gonna taste it on its own. Oh my gosh, it's just like this clean, pure salt, and it's like flaky and the crystallization is like so nice, you know? Like there is a difference between finishing flaky salts and this is like a good balance of like, it's not too large of a flake, it's not too flat and breaking, it's just right. like right where you want it to be um, to use as a finishing salt, so. Some of the chefs who use our salt compare its taste, say it tastes like the fleur de sel with an entirely different Completely. texture. Right. I totally agree with that. And it's just clean. It's very clean. And maybe that's because I've, I've been out in the sun all day and in the water and I'm seeing this just totally natural, pure process. And it's that much more rewarding to taste the final result. It's really satisfying. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It just brings out the flavors and makes it pop. And that's its job, enhancing amazing food. Salt is just, I've always been a lover of salt. Like I want to taste it on my food, but through cooking, you know, it's the foundation of making good food. You have to use salt at, you know, from the beginning stage to the middle stage, finishing stage, you know, it's all bringing a different thing to the table and it's just so important. It's the foundation of cooking. <laughs> so I'm so glad that I got to see this process and it's just so good. I hope you liked this episode. If you want to see something from our sister brand, The Verge, click here. A whole lot of microbes that scientists and cheesemakers are still trying to catalog and understand. Take this cheddar, for instance. It's called Stocking Hall Cheddar, and it's made by Murray's Cheese in New York City. 